Hi there, this is Vadim Michalenka, and in this quick tutorial we're going to look at the key features of Microsoft Visio and build some exciting diagrams, coming up here on online training for everyone. To launch Microsoft Visio, we can find the application in the Start menu by scrolling in alphabetical order and finding Visio under letter V. Another way to launch the application would be to type the name of it in Cartana bar, and it launches it as well. Now it's a good time to pin the application to taskbar by doing the right mouse click and selecting Pin to taskbar, especially if you're planning to use the application frequently. When we launch the application on the left, we see the list of uh, files that have been recently opened or created. And you can pin the file uh, by using the pin button. And what pinning allows you to do is to make sure that you have always accessed the frequently used files. They always will remain on the top. And on the right, you see multiple different categories for the Visio templates. You can start by creating a blank diagram, or you can pick one of the featured or based on the selective category in business, engineering, using flowchart, general, maps, floor, network, schedule, software and database, and more. For the purposes of this demo, we're going to create a basic flowchart diagram for student registration process. To do that, we will select nice looking template with multiple different colored shapes, and then we'll select US units and click Create. By default, there is a pre-built template. We're going to delete all of the data so we can start from scratch. I'm just going to go and click Control A to select everything. Another way to do it uh, would be just drag and drop cursor and then click Delete button. As you can see, there are basic flowchart shapes on the left and there are multiple uh, shapes available to create flowcharts like process, decision, uh, start and end, and data. When creating a good diagram, it's important to use minimum number of shapes that needed to communicate your message. We'll start with the start shape, and I'm going to drag and drop it onto the picture. I'm going to make zooming a little bit bigger. Uh, there's a zoom in function at the bottom uh, right corner. I'm going to double click on the shape and type start. Let's add additional shape data and then connect the two shapes. As you can see, as I move the shape, Visio allows us to align them in the middle or based on the uh, edges of the shape. And to connect them, you need to select the object and then go to the Home tab and select Connector and then connect the shape. Then you type the value inside the shape and you can also uh, select Pointer to and resize the shape as needed. Obviously, you would want to realign it if necessary. If you'd like to learn more about Microsoft Visio, I recommend the online training course. I carefully selected this training course and hope you will enjoy it. Just navigate to howtoanalyzedata.net slash Visio to take advantage of the discounted price. I make a small commission to support this channel, but don't buy anything unless you need it. Now let's continue and have more fun. Now let's add more shapes and produce the valid diagram so we can use it as an example. And you can see how it's done. Let's look at the typical functions available to work with the shapes in Visio. We'll drag the start and end shape, and we'll also drag uh, and drop the data shape here. And now let's try to connect them. To connect the shape, you need to select it, and you see these arrows. If you hover the cursor without clicking, you can either select the next shape. See, as I'm moving from shape to shape, Visio allows me to add a, dis a different shape and connect right away, or if I just click on this arrow, it allows me to connect to the next shape uh, where arrow is pointing to. To add text to the shape, you just double click on the shape and start typing. And then you hit enter if you want to go to another line, or you click escape button. You can also resize the shape 
To do that, you just need to select the shape and then drag and drop the corners of the shape, or if you're just doing the vertical dimension or horizontal dimension, the middles of the shape. You can also rotate the shape when you have your selection. Uh, there's a rotation button that you just need to click and then you rotate the shape uh, to make it at the angle that you'd like to have it. I'm going to click undo. Remember I told you this is my favorite button because it allows me to experiment and do a lot of different things. You can also format shapes. To do that you just need to click uh, select the shape and then click on the home tab and there's a, a shape styles button so you can pick a different style for the shape which allows you to select different color and different themes and there are a lot of themes available. Here you can change just the lines of the shape. Uh, feel of the shape or choose different effect. Maybe you want a glow effect for the shape or maybe you would like 3D effect for the shape. As usual I'm going to use undo button to get back to where I was. Next thing we're going to cover is the in place menu. To do this you need to select the shape and use a right mouse click which gets you to the menu. At the top there are some formatting functions, key formatting functions that's available to you. At the bottom, in this section, you see uh, key actions that you can do with the shape, like copy, uh, cut, paste, auto-connect, uh, grouping of the shapes, and a lot of other functions. In the top portion, uh, you can change the font size, make it larger, make it smaller, make it bold, italic, um, use format painter, uh, or change shape or do a lot of different things in terms of arranging the shapes, send it to back if there are multiple shapes that conflicting the view, or align it to in different direction, or you can add connector to the page. And you can access the same styles menu I just showed to you right from here in the in-place menu. <laughs> Let's quickly look at the Format Painter, which allows you to copy design of the shape and apply it to a different shape. To do that, you need to select the shape itself. It's available in the Home tab. You click Format Painter, and then you navigate and apply formatting uh, to different shapes. It doesn't apply text, but it applies background, font color. If I would start typing, it would apply uh, style of the text as well. If you remember, we selected italic and bold, and the word text here that I typed uh, reflects that. Now let's look on the left at the different Visio stencils available. And what Visio does, based on the type of diagram we've selected, it adds different shapes that might be useful for us based on the selection that we've made. So for example, if we go back to basic flowchart shapes, it shows us key flowchart shapes that's available, and then there's another section of some additional shapes that Visio believes might be useful to us. We can search for the specific shape, uh, and maybe we need to find the document and when I click this, Visio searches its entire database of shapes and brings for us uh, all the options available and we can choose if something matches and represents document better. If you find what you're looking for, you can always bring the shape right here into the diagram from the search results. Which brings us to the important point of selecting the right type of diagram when you go to and select the new Visio document or starting to work on the new Visio document. The best way is to look by categories. For example, a lot of business diagrams you just need to scroll to find what you're looking for. Or a lot of engineering diagrams. 
a lot of flow chart diagrams. We just picked one available template, but there are tons of others available. You can also search to find the template that you might be looking for. For example, floor plan, uh, which is something you need, but Visio still has a lot of different choices available for you. Are you enjoying this episode? Make sure to subscribe so you're not missing the next one. And tell your friends about it so they will learn more skills in the area. Now let's continue and have more fun. Now let's look at how selecting the right template will help us build the diagram much faster. We'll go back to Featured and we'll select the basic flowchart diagram and we'll create diagram from the template. So what happened now when I clicked a flowchart diagram, Microsoft used the template and uh, it created pre-built uh, flowchart diagram which can show different parts. You can just come in and modify it. To do that, you need to zoom in a little bit. And one cool feature I'd like to show you was the ribbon interface. You can always hide parts of it and make it accessible on demand. So now when, only when you click tab, it becomes available. You can pin it back using this button or you can uh, close it. This allows me to see bigger screen and I'm going to zoom in even more so we can see the details. On the left here, um, this is the helpful information from Microsoft. We can delete it because it's not needed. I'm just going to select it on the left and click delete button. Uh, but let's look at the process. It starts. Uh, so this is the starting point of flowchart diagram, then there's a data decision. Uh, this is how decision is shown, and you have yes flow on the left and right, no flow on the right, and different processes typed here, and then this is the end part of the diagram. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to modify this diagram to show what's going to happen for the student that's trying to register for our undergraduate program. Now let's look at the ribbon interface in Microsoft Visio. It consists of multiple tabs. And as you can see, when I selected the tab, it brought up the ribbon. You can pin the ribbon by using the pin the ribbon button, or you can unpin it, and it will hide to allow you for more space on the screen. So you can see. Most of the functions that you will be using frequently are gathered in the home uh, ribbon tab, and all of those tabs are called tabs for, for a good reason because you can switch between tabs. For example, file is one tab, home, insert, design, data, process, review, view, and other tabs. You can also navigate and find functions within the group. For example, in the home tab, there are multiple groups, one called clipboard, and there's a group called font, paragraph, tools, uh, shape styles, arrange, and editing. And they're grouped based on the functions that you would be frequently using. Sometimes there is not enough information that could fit in the entire group. For example, in the font, if we would say need to change the font here, we need to select the shape and then select font. But you see there is a, a dialog box icon here at the bottom right corner of the group. And when we click on this, it shows some additional functions for the font. Uh, maybe we need to select specific font, bold, italic, different sizes and then you click apply. Obviously I picked too big of a font. Uh, I'll reapply it again. But you can do have access to much more. you have access to a lot more functions using this text dialog box and all the functions that they didn't you have access to a lot more functions in this dialog box. In addition to this you can use the tell me what you want to do function of Visio and just say, based on your selection, what you want to do. For example, font size. Let's look at the same thing, and we can pick uh, a different font size, and it dynamically shows us the effect of the changes that we make. And based on our selection, based on our typing, um, a lot of different functions become available here. And you can find functions, even though you may not know where in the ribbon it exists, you can type it uh, here and find it 
for example, layout changes uh, or uh, style changes or some other things. Pretty much anything is available through this function. As in every Office application, there is quick access toolbar, which allows you to access uh, some functions, most frequently used functions. For example, undo function, my favorite one. Uh, and it lists here all the undo things uh, that you can do that's available to you at the moment. If you went too far, you can do redo. Redo allows you to reverse changes from undo function if you think you went too far. A lot of times you need to zoom in or zoom out from the diagram. To do it, you can go to the view menu and there's a whole zoom section available. Home zoom. Um, there's a whole zoom group available and you can click the zoom and pick specific zooming magnification level or you can have different fit to window for example uh, or different option maybe like a page width and based and then zooming is selected. You can also access zooming in the bottom right corner of the screen and this is a very effective way to zoom in and zoom out. Since we are in the bottom right corner you can also fit into window function it's available right here uh, and you can also use a full screen mode just to preview how your diagram is going to look like without any menus and any additional things to exit this mode you just need to click escape button now let's look at the some key functions of what you can do with microsoft visa document most of them are available in the file menu and uh, for example, what you can do here, you can access the information about the document. A lot of properties that you can change, maybe put a company name, ABC Corp, and you can modify any available document properties here. This is useful if you, for example, creating a PDF file and then distributing it. Uh, it will be indexed and all of this information will show up in the index. This way people will be able to find you on Google or find the documents that you're creating. In addition to making modifications, as you can see, it shows a lot of valuable information. For example, it shows template that we've used to build this document, shows when it was created, uh, shows the author, and maybe a related document if you have. Since we are on this screen, I'd like to show you some other cool functions that's available. For example, if you click check on issues, I often use reduce file size, which deletes all unused objects and reduces sizes of the images, which is very helpful, especially if you're dealing with the huge documents. You can also remove personal information if this is something that you're interested in. This will clear out the properties and remove all information that you don't need uh, to distribute. And the last cool feature I'd like to show you is the sharing document. You can share it uh, with other people through OneDrive, but I often use email. And when I do email, I send it either as an attachment, the Visio file, which brings up the Outlook, uh, or you can send it as PDF. And this creates an email message and uh, it creates the file and attaches the PDF file. And uh, you can click on the file and you can preview the file. This opens the Edge browser and then you type the email of recipient and send it. Have you enjoyed this episode? Make sure to subscribe so you will not miss the next one. And tell your friends about it. You can find links and downloads in the description section of this video. There are a lot of helpful links and a lot of other helpful information you will benefit from. Make sure to check out my other relevant videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have a lot of great stuff planned in the pipeline and I don't want you to miss any of it. And if you'd like to get notified about all the new stuff that are coming out, make sure to subscribe to my email list as well. All links are here on the screen. Make sure to click to stay in touch. Thanks again for watching.